seeing this mechanism in action for the first time in 28 years, uh, I'm struck by how organic and uh, natural its motion is. The way that uh, I approached it was looking at other kinds of tail mechanisms I had seen and pivoted mechanisms that were supposed to look kind of organic. It seemed like an approach that was more like a real spine or more like a real tongue or something like that was probably a bit more fruitful. And it also seemed like it was probably a lot simpler to make. Um, the way that I did this was I just poured a bunch of dental acrylic into the core mold of the chest burster, pulled the solid lump out, cut it up on a bandsaw. Using a Dremel, I made uh, four little grooves at each uh, point of the compass on each of the little sections that I made from the core. So I had a bunch of discs, like a spine, and each one had a, a little groove at each point of the compass. And I, uh, I set into that Teflon tubing, and then down the center as a sort of sp as a spinal column, I used just a piece of cable housing. And, uh, and I found that it moved very, very fluidly, but that wasn't enough. You needed to then mount on top of the fluid tongue-like mechanism. You needed to mount uh, a, a, the head pivoting more traditionally on a, on a universal joint with the four cables. And the combination of the tongue-like motion of the spine plus the head moving uh, opposite to that often gives you that serpentine motion that looks so um, naturalistic. And the whole thing is very simple, operated by eight cables from a couple of joysticks. Easily mass producible. Uh, and then the arms, you know, I've got to say, I'm kind of amazed at how much emotion comes out of those little arms. They were so small on the sculpture, there was no real chance of making a tiny little mechanism. You'd have to get into watchmaking to be that size. So I just thought, you know what, I'll pull them with one tiny little cable just to give them some motion. But looking at it now, it, it, it doesn't just move, it has a real character and a real emotional component. The whole thing has ended up being kind of notable because it's so simple. It comes from an artist's point of view first rather than a mechanical point of view. And the, uh, the result is greater than the sum of its parts, which is always a good thing. But for something this big, or a tongue, or a alien antenna, these interesting cable-operated spine mechanisms, uh, you know, uh, always, uh, always very rewarding.